In this video, we are going to practice calculating formal charge and using formal charge to uh, evaluate the accuracy of Lewis structures. Let's start with a refresher on how we calculate the formal charge. For every atom, we are going to take its number of valence electrons as we would determine by looking at the periodic table, subtract from that the number of bonds that are around that particular atom in the Lewis structure that we're evaluating, and from that we will subtract the number of non-bonding electrons, the number of electrons that are in lone pairs. So we have three different molecules that we're going to look at in this video. We have CH2F2. This is a molecule that we've already drawn the Lewis structure for in previous videos, so we're starting right out with the Lewis structure. We're going to calculate the formal charges and use that to evaluate whether or not this Lewis structure is accurate. Then we're going to draw the Lewis structures of these two molecules and use formal charges as a way of kind of checking our work. So let's start with, um, for CH2F2, let's start with the hydrogens. Hydrogen is in group 1A on the periodic table, so that means it has one valence electron. And when we're looking at the hydrogen in this molecule, we're just gonna focus on this part right here that I've circled. This hydrogen has one single bond, so that's one bond, and it also has no non-bonding electrons, no lone pairs. One minus one is zero. So this hydrogen has a formal charge of zero, which means that it is happy. Remember, the formal charge of zero is means that the atom is in a perfect ideal bonding state. Our second hydrogen over here, you can see that it is identical in terms of its bonding environment. The, both of the hydrogens have one single bond and no lone pairs. And when the two atoms are identical to each other, that means that they're gonna have the same formal charge. So we don't need to calculate the formal charge on this hydrogen separately. We know that it is zero as well. So now let's work on this fluorine atom right here. Fluorine is in group 7A, which means it has seven valence electrons. If we're looking at just the electrons that are around this fluorine, we can see one single bond and one, two, three, four, five, six non-bonding. Seven valence electrons minus one single bond minus six non-bonding, that is another formal charge of zero. Formal charge of zero, again, means that this hydrogen is in a wonderful, perfect bonding environment. Or fluorine, I'm sorry, I said hydrogen. Here is fluorine number two, and when we look at the two fluorines side by side, we can see that they are in identical bonding environments. They each have one single bond, they each have three lone pairs, six total non-bonding electrons. So just like with the hydrogens, that means that we know that both of these fluorines have the same formal charge. And last but not least, we've got our carbon atom in the center. Carbon atom is in group 4A, so that means it has four valence electrons. If we're looking at this carbon, what's around this carbon, we can see one, two, three, four bonds and no non-bonding electrons. So four minus four minus zero is another formal charge of zero. All five of the atoms in this molecule have a formal charge of zero. All of the formal charges of zero means that the Lewis structure that we drew is correct. Again, our goal is to get our formal charges as close to zero as possible. And in the last video, I also talked about how when we add up the formal charges for all of the atoms, they should equal the charge of the overall molecule. This is a neutral molecule, so all five of these formal charges should add up to zero. Uh, zero plus zero plus zero plus zero plus zero equals zero. So let's move on to this molecule over here. We're going to start by drawing the, the actual Lewis structure for this molecule using our steps, um, not using the Lewis dot symbol. So we're going to practice that. Nitrogen has five valence electrons and chlorine has um, seven valence electrons. So the total number of valence electrons in the NCl3 molecule is 26. 
Again, nitrogen, because it is in group 5A on the periodic table, it has five valence electrons. Chlorine is in group 7A, so it has seven, and we have three chlorines, so three times seven, 21 total valence electrons from the chlor chlorines plus five from the nitrogen gives us 26 electrons to work with. We always wanna start by putting the central, or the first atom in the center of the molecule, the first atom reading from left to right is nitrogen. So nitrogen goes in the middle and then the chlorines are gonna be arranged around the nitrogen. We will connect the outer atoms to the inner atom with a single bond and that used two for six total electrons, which means we have 20 electrons left to work with. We will now turn to the outer electrons and work on giving them an octet by putting non-bonding electrons around them in lone pairs. I gotta count how much I'm doing here because I only have 20 electrons to use. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. That used 18 electrons, I have two left. And again, what happened there as a refresher, we want to give all of our outer atoms an octet or a set of eight. So they started with one bond, which had two, and then we added six more electrons, which gave them a total of eight. So now that all the outer atoms have their octet, we're gonna turn to the inner atom and give it an octet. The inner atom already has two, four, six electrons. It only needs two more, which is exactly how many we have. So we've used all of our electrons and all of our atoms have the octet around them. And we feel, I feel pretty confident that this structure is accurate, but we're gonna use formal charges as a way of double checking. So for the chlorine, chlorine again in group seven has seven valence electrons. The chlorine atom has one single bond and one, two, three, four, five, six non-bonding. Seven minus one minus six is a formal charge of zero. And that is true for all of the chlorines in this molecule because they all have the exact same bonding environment. They all have one single bond with three lone pairs. Then we have the nitrogen. Nitrogen has a valence of five. This nitrogen has three single bonds and two non-bonding electrons. Five minus three minus two is a zero. There's another formal charge of zero. All formal charges are zero. And so that means that this Lewis structure is probably correct. So moving on to our last one, and this is our last example. And we're, again, we're gonna draw the Lewis structure for this and we're gonna calculate the formal charges. Now this molecule um, has a little bit of tricky of a bonding pattern. So I'm gonna tell you that from the get-go that the arrangement of the atoms in this molecule is OCS. So carbon is in the middle with the oxygen and the sulfur outside of it. Let's start by adding up our valence electrons. Oxygen has six, carbon has four, and sulfur has six. So four plus six plus four gives us a total of 14 valence. Oh, I wrote that backwards. Oxygen has six, carbon has four, and sulfur has six. So that gives us 16 valence electrons to work with. As I said, carbon is in the middle with the oxygen and the sulfur around it, and we'll connect them with single bonds. Those single bonds used two, four electrons. So that gives us 12 left. And now we're gonna start by satisfying the octet of our outer atom. So this oxygen currently has two electrons, so it needs six more. That leaves us with six electrons to work with. And this sulfur currently has two, it needs six more, which means that we have used all of our electrons, we have none left. Our central atom, carbon, only has two, four electrons around it, which means it needs four more. And we've talked about this before when we were first learning about Lewis structures. The way that we will give this carbon more electrons is by taking a lone pair and turning that lone pair into a double bond. So since we've done that, 
double checking our oxygen, we have two, four, six, eight electrons, and carbon has two, four, six, which means it still needs two more. Now here is where we're, we've got like a couple of choices. To give carbon another two electrons, we have two options. We could, I'm gonna redraw this Lewis structure. We could take a lone pair from sulfur. So here's our redrawn structure. We could take one of the lone pairs from sulfur and we could make another double bond like that. That would be one option. The other option that we have in this case is to take again from a lone pair from oxygen and make a triple bond. So if we do that, let's just kind of double check our octets. Oxygen has two, four, six, eight. Carbon has two, four, six, eight. Sulfur has two, four, six, eight in this structure. And this one down here, oxygen has two, four, six, eight, carbon has two, four, six, eight, and sulfur has two, four, six, eight. So even though these two structures are different, all of the atoms have octets. And so now we're in a situation of which one of these stru structures is better, which one of them is the most accurate. And this is where formal charge comes in hand handy because we can calculate the formal charges for all of these atoms and we can use that to help us try to figure out the best structure. So let's start with this one up here. Oxygen has six valence electrons. This particular oxygen has two bonds and four non-bonding electrons. Six minus two minus four is zero. So that looks good. This carbon atom, carbons have four valence electrons. This carbon has four bonds and no lone pairs. So another formal charge of zero. Sulfur also has six valence electrons. This sulfur has two bonds four lone pairs, and another formal charge, or two bonds, four non-bonding, and another formal charge of zero. Without even doing any calculations down here, this Lewis structure is clearly the best because all of the atoms have formal charges of zero. But let's pretend um, like that we didn't start here, and let's, let's calculate the formal charges for this molecule down here. So this oxygen with six valence electrons, three bonds, and two non-bonding electrons has a formal charge of plus one. Carbon, four valence electrons, four bonds, no non-bonding, so carbon is looking good. Sulfur with six valence electrons, one bond, and six non-bonding has a formal charge of negative one. Now, these formal charges of plus one and minus one aren't bad, but formal charges of zero are always going to be better. When you are looking at a molecule that has formal charges and you're asking yourself, like, what could I do? Is it possible to make those formal charges go away? I want you to think about the formal charges as sort of reflecting the atom's situation in terms of the number of electrons that are around it. So when oxygen has a positive formal charge, that simply means that it doesn't quite have enough electrons all to itself. And one of the ways that we can give oxygen electrons all to itself, I'm going to kind of draw over here is the opposite of what we did when we were trying to, um, or I guess the same as what we would do when we we're trying to give electrons to another atom. So if we wanted to get rid or deal with the negative formal or the positive formal charge on the oxygen, if we wanted to try to minimize the positive formal charge on that oxygen, one thing that we could do is take a bond and turn it into a lone pair. By taking a bond and turning it into a lone pair, this oxygen now matches an oxygen with a zero formal charge. So we've made this oxygen happy. Likewise, when we see an atom that has a negative formal charge, that means that this um, atom has too much electron. And so to resolve that, what we can do is take a lone pair and turn it into a double bond. So in that way, we are moving electrons away from that atom towards somebody else to help get rid of that formal charge. So this last example gave us an opportunity to see how you can use formal charge to choose when you have multiple possible Lewis structures, and also an opportunity to look at how we can use formal charges as a way of helping us fix a Lewis structure. I have one more formal charge video that has three more uh, examples of drawing Lewis structures and calculating formal charges.